So today I just want to look at one of the key ideas when we look at a statistical report and that is looking at where, what type of data have we got and have we got data that is from some kind of observational study or do we have data that is from um, some kind of statistical experiment okay now depending on which one I have depends on the information I've been given and it also then has an impact on how I interpret the information that I am given so let me give you an example if I think about um, how I collect the data if I was to go out and ask a bunch of people a bunch of questions and record their answers I am not intervening in any way. I am just simply asking for information. So this would be an example of an observational study. Okay. Another example was if I was to sit in um, a classroom. So I was in um, as a teacher in a school, and I sit. We sit there and observe the behaviour of students in my classroom and absorb who's working, who's not working, and I record some note, collect some data about that, that is also an observational study. As the observer, or as the person collecting the data, I am not making students do something. I'm not paper, making people do this or do that. I'm simply observing their choice. So in an observational study, the people that I ask, my participants... they choose okay whereas if I was talking about a statistical experiment what I would then have is I would collect a group of people okay and so I've got my participants and you'll have to excuse my fantastic drawing skills um, so I've got this group of participants and I am going to randomly allocate them to one of two groups I'm either going to allocate them to the treatment group or the control group, okay? But the key there, note my wording, the key there was that I was randomly allocating them, okay? So because of that random allocation, that's what makes this into an um, experimental situation. Okay, so in an experiment, the instead of the participants choosing what they do, here the experimenter chooses. So I choose, I might randomly allocate students to either do a task listening to music or to do a task not listening to music. And I decide which one they will do by randomly putting them into one group or the other. The student doesn't get the choice of whether they listen to music or not. As the person in charge, the experimenter, I make the decision which one they will do. So when you're reading through a statistical report, this is one of the key things you are looking for. And you are looking for that phrase, random allocation. If you see that word, those words, random allocation, we know we have some kind of, um, oh, that was badly done, um, we have some kind of statistical experiment. Whereas if we talk about um, any kind of survey, any kind of watching and collecting data in some kind of observational way, then that is going to be an observational study. Now the difference that this makes is how we can interpret the results. So if I have um, an observational study, oh, what is it doing? Observational study, that means that I can make some kind of inference. I can suggest that from my sample data, 
that I can suggest that what is happening in the population is dot dot dot. Okay, so I can make an inference about it. Whereas if I have experimental data, so if I've done kind of some kind of experimental study, then that's when we can look at this idea of causation. So I can show that doing this activity here causes this effect to happen. So for example, I might be able to prove that with an experiment that if I have a sticking plaster and I rip that sticking plaster off someone, I can show that doing that causes somebody to get very upset and cry little tears. Oh gosh, my tears are very badly drawn there. Okay, so I'm trying to show that there is, this is the cause and this is the effect. All right, so that is when we then look at the language that is used in our um, statistical report is to, if the data was collected as observational, have they used the data suggests that, I, the data implies that. So have they used words that are suggestive type words? Whereas if you've got experimental studies, they are able to use that more formal language that I can show causation, I can show that there is an effect of doing this on it. So this, an experimental study, is much more, if you think about, like for example, this is the gold star treatment. All right, that's my gold star of statistics. That's my much greater type of proof. But I'm only proving it for the group of people that I have done my experiment on. Okay, so I'm only proving it for my control and treatment group. I'm not proving it for everybody in the entire world. I'm just pr showing it for the group of people that I have done the experiment on. Like a clinical trials with drugs, I can show that giving this particular group of people this drug has had this effect because I've controlled every other condition except for the one that I am testing. So when I come to use the language, I can again, I can only refer specifically to the group of people that were tested. I can't make observations and suggest that this is going to be true for everyone else because I don't know. I haven't got the data on everybody else to show that it will work. So when you're evaluating a statistical report, look at the language. So first of all, decide, is it observational? Is it experimental? Was there a random allocation done? Um, so if we're going back and reminding you, if I've done that random allocation, we've got experimental data. The experiment allocated people into treatment and control groups. Um, and if I have one or the other, can I make an inference or can I show causation?